welcome back guys welcome in another video tutorial so in this video tutorial we will going to talk about on red white screening so this is a topic which comes under the topic yeast artificial chromosome so although i had a video on red white screening in my youtube channel but i have deleted it for some unavoidable reasons so this will going to be a new version of red white screening by me so let's get started so before going to talk about red white screening it is important for me to give you about some basic concept of yeast artificial chromosome okay so remember we have constructed yeast artificial chromosome bacterial artificial chromosome for larger purposes for example creation of genomic dna library for creation of transgenic animals okay so in yeast artificial chromosome and again yeast artificial chromosome it is a shuttle vector okay shuttle vector means this yeast artificial chromosome can propagate inside a eukaryote as well as a prokaryote okay so for propagation of yeast inside sorry propagation of yak that is the short form of yeast artificial chromosome inside yeast there should be a centromeric sequence okay then there will be a origin of replication for yeast and also a origin of replication for bacteria okay there should be also marker gene that will help us to distinguish yak containing yeast cell and there will be also a marker gene that will be helpful in case of bacteria when our yak will be inside bacteria okay there will be also multiple cloning side okay and two telomeric sequence will be present for the stability of yak inside yeast okay and there should be two bam h1 site flanking the telomere strategically that means we have placed bam h1 here strategically okay and in some literature you may also find that they have only used one bam h1 site here both are correct because you know what the actual reason of placing bam h1 here is to linearize the vector okay because just try to think about this if we try digest our vector with bam h1 it will cut here and as a result the dna will be or the chromosome will be linearized okay so in general yak are grown in bacteria okay now when it is needed it can be isolated by plasmid isolation protocol because it is nothing but a plasmid circularized dna inside bacteria okay once we have isolated it we will apply bam h1 to linearize it okay now this linearized yak have telomeric sequence at the two end and that is why we have placed bam h1 here so that the telomeric sequence will be present at the two end of the linearized yak okay so now after that we will perform restriction digestion but now it will be for the mcs okay so now after that we will add our gene of interest that can be in case of yak up to 2 megabase pair okay once we have inserted it we will our and obviously we will undergo the insertion process via ligase okay most of the cases we are using t4 dna ligase because it uses atp molecule that is very easy to provide as compared to your e coli dna ligase because e coli dna ligase uses nad plus as its cofactor okay now upon the addition of ligase it will also linearize because here two bam h1 cut sites are present so they will also ligate okay so now we have our circularized yak chromosome containing gene of interest right according to our cloning protocol 
what should be next uh, our next step should be the electroporation that means we have to take any kind of transformation technique to transfer our yak inside yeast okay now why we have chosen electroporation because we can also use heat shock ccl2 method because that is more easier than electroporation then why electroporation because remember yeast is a eukaryotic cell number 1 and it has cell wall and for heat shock ccl2 method it is not possible to transfer the yak inside yeast okay by penetrating the cell wall and that is why we have to use electroporation okay so now once it is inside the yeast we can plate the culture in presence of a appropriate medium okay and we will get two type of colonies one will be red in color and another one will be white in color okay here the red color colonies will be recombinant colonies and white color colonies will be non recombinant colonies and this type of screening procedure is known as red white screening and that is our topic of discussion today how it is going on how the recombinant colonies giving us red color and non recombinant colonies giving us white color okay before that let's learn about the use of the yak so we can use yak for making genomic dna library and we can also use yak for making transgenic animal okay and what are the disadvantages of yak first of all it is hard to handle because yak is very large vector okay not only that yak also allowing gene of interest of size 2 megabase pair that is why it becomes very big okay so it is hard to handle and hard to propagate right and it has some stability issues also that is why nowadays for making genomic dna library for making transgenic animals we are relying on bac that is bacterial artificial chromosome okay so that is the idea of yak i hope you have understood it very well right so now we will going to talk about the biochemistry behind the red white screening so this is the idea of red white screening so in case of yeast cell remember there are two genes present ade1 and ade2 these two genes produces two type of enzyme one is phosphoribosyl amino imidazole succinocarboxamide synthetase again phosphoribosyl amino imidazole succinocarboxamide synthetase and second one is that is from ade2 it produces phosphoribosyl amino imidazole carboxylase okay that means ade1 gene produces this enzyme and ade2 gene produces this enzyme and these two enzyme are involved in the synthesis of adenine okay that is the normal thing that is going on in case of normal yeast cell okay now in case of yak vector the yeast host cell that we are using are not a normal or wild type okay instead it is a mutant cell and the name of this mutation is ad21 uaa mutation okay we will going to talk about this so this mutation is ad21 uaa mutation and this type of mutant cell are known as ad21 mutant cell okay so now this mutant cell cannot produce adenine completely instead it produce a red color intermediate okay understood so now there can be two situation okay so inside that yeast there should be a presence of sub4 gene okay if it is present then the colonies will be white in color okay that means the color of wild type strain but if sub4 gene absent the colony will be red in color okay that means this sub4 gene will going to suppress this ade mutation okay 
but if SAFOR gene is not present, AD mutation expresses itself and as a result the colonies of yeast will be red in color. Okay. Now the idea question is how SAFOR gene suppressing AD mutation. So remember SAFOR gene produces a kind of tRNA molecule. This tRNA molecule will going to suppress this mutation. Okay. Now as I have told you that we are here using a yeast cell that is <coughs> sorry having AD to one UA mutation. Okay. And we also going to design the yeast chromosome in such a way that it will lack the sub4 gene that means sub4 minus okay now we have designed our yak chromosome in such a way that inside the mcs it have sorry inside the mcs it have sub4 gene okay friends and as a result and as a result what will happen when we will transfer them inside those mutant cell if gene of interest is inserted inside the mcs sub4 gene will be inactivated okay and as a result yak cannot complement the sub4 gene okay and as a result the colony of recombinant yak containing cell will be red in color okay on the other hand if self ligation occurs then sub4 gene will be intact right and as sub4 gene is intact it can now complement the sub4 gene and as a result the re non recombinant colonies will be white in color why because the sub4 gene that yak providing will going to suppress the ade mutation okay and that is why in case of red white screening you will get red color colonies for recombinant cells and white color colonies for non recombinant cell so that is the idea of red white screening okay so idea is very simple in case of the yak vector we have sub4 gene in the mcs okay and we are taking host cell which is mutated and having ade mutation and due to this mutation this host cell can only capable of producing a red color intermediate in the adenine biosynthesis pathway right now if gene of interest is not inserted inside the yak that means self ligation occurs if it occurs then after the transformation the sub4 gene can be useful for the host cell and as a result the ad mutation of the host cell will be suppressed right and that is why non recombinant colonies will be white in color but if gene of interest is inserted inside the mcs sub4 gene will be mutated right and as a result it cannot suppress the ad mutation of the host cell and as a result the colonies will be red in color so that is the idea of red white screening okay so i hope this video will be helpful for you so if it is please hit the like button share with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that thank you for listening to this class